I'm glad to have the Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland Skype for an interview with Deutsche Welle. Ms. Patricia Scotland, thanks a lot for giving us your time. I would like to ask you a few questions about issues regarding challenges of climate change and natural disasters and catastrophes faced by South Asia, particularly Pakistan. As we know, Pakistan, like other South Asian countries, continue to encounter more frequent natural disasters. How does the Commonwealth Secretariat view this and the contributing factors to this climatic change? Since 1989, the Commonwealth was one of the first agencies, if you like, organizations to raise this matter on uh, an international stage. But now the speed and the ferocity of these climatic incidents are becoming so overwhelming that no one in the world can now put them to one side. So we in the Commonwealth have been raising these issues and thinking about how we can work together to build a more resilient, a more responsive, a more regenerative uh, response to this issue. Uh, and we came together as a, a Commonwealth in 2015. Pakistan, is, as you know only too well, suffered very badly last year from the flooding. And the flooding was right across Asia, as you also indicated. It started in Sri Lanka. Terrible floods. It was Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India. And so we now know that we have to do so much more to make our countries more resilient. And that means we have to invest in adaptation and really craft the change. Uh, Ms. Patricia, how can the Commonwealth Secretariat provide technical assistance to Pakistan to build resilience to disaster and speed up its uh, commitments to the Paris Agreement? Any tools that the Secretariat offers which can be used? Yes, um, well, we, have cre we are creating a number. The first is the Commonwealth Climate Finance Access Hub. We are putting um, advisors in our countries in order to understand better what works to make applications to the Green Fund. You will know it was a huge amount of money that was committed by the international community to the Green Fund for adaptation and mitigation. Regrettably, it's been incredibly difficult for many of our countries to access those funds. So we're creating this um, financial climate access fund, particularly for the small and vulnerable, but all of the lessons can be replicated for all of us. The other thing we're doing is to create a, a disaster uh, access hub in order to, a portal, in, to be a one-stop shop so that all of our countries will have a degree of specific information as to what may be available to them. And we're in the process of building that right now. We've also built a tool, a climate, a legal climate tool, toolkit, which people can use to improve the laws and implementation so that we get better outcomes from all of this. So these are three, but there are more instruments that I am happy to talk to you about, not least our Blue Charter which we think is going to make a huge difference. Oh, that's great that you are really, really seriously taking the matter up. Uh, according to the Multidimensional Poverty Index, Pakistan is facing food insecurity, natural hazards like drought, landslide, earthquake. What should be the line of action to deal with these issues? Uh, what can be a pan-Commonwealth approach to tackle this? I said one of the things that we are doing now is looking to see how we can create a regenerative model of development, which will deliver on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And we are creating within our Commonwealth implementation toolkits. So not just this is what we think you should do, but culling from all the knowledge from the 53 countries, how do we do it? So the implementation toolkits is the sharing of knowledge that is from across the Commonwealth so that we can help each other deliver these targets and goals better. And we've created, and I hope all of your um, listeners um, and viewers will go to it, a website, which is thecommonwealth.org, which shares the innovations in our countries so that we can help each other. We've created an office of civil and criminal justice reform so we can share 
the legal structures that we're all putting together. And we've got things on health, on sport, and on um, development for young people. So for example, we're seeing how we can use cricket to bring us all together. Um, cricket for sport and development, cricket for peace, cricket for climate change, and sport for these things. And we know that, particularly in um, Asia, cricket is a very exciting thing that brings us all together. So it's indeed. Uh, what is the expected outcome that you will uh, believe will come out of the Commonwealth disaster risk financing? What we hope is that we will get the sorts of money that will help our country. So, for example, we've only just started um, with uh, an investment of a little under uh, one million Australian dollars, so a very small amount. We thought we'd taste this and see. And already, in a very short period, we've already secured 4.5 million pounds sterling for some of our countries. But we have 140 million pound sterling in the pipeline. And so we now know this facility, finance access facility, actually works. And it works because we can hone the applications so that we get the money from the fund, but not only the money. Our countries are now implementing these programs and we are getting the results. So we can share those results with all of our members so that we are better able to make a difference and get some results out of the efforts that we're making. But it's going to take all of us, and I know Pakistan will be a very good partner. In um, Ms. Patricia, water crisis is another alarming issue for the global village, which is our world. How does the Commonwealth look at it, especially in terms of Pakistan and India? Well, there is a huge opportunity because we are members of the same family. In the Commonwealth, uh, Pakistan and India have met on so many occasions, all our ministerial meetings, whether it's the ministers of finance or the ministers of health or the ministers, the legal ministers or the sports ministers or the youth ministers. These are all platforms where all the members of our family are coming together to think about how we should work together. And it was extraordinary that at a time in April, when there was so much international dissonance, not getting good, cohesive answers, whether it's from the G7 or the G20, our 53 countries came together at Chogham and we agreed on everything. We agreed on what we needed to do for connectivity for trade. We agreed on what we needed to do for climate change. We agreed on what we needed to do for women, for young people, for, for um, the development of our systems going forward. And this was an extraordinary thing to have one third of the world's population, because the Commonwealth is 2.4 billion people, um, coming to one place and saying, we agree that this is what we collectively will do to de deliver on the Sustainable Development Goals and to be true to our values. And Pakistan and India were there with us in agreement and agreeing all of those things. It was a remarkable and very warming thing to see happen. So my last question regarding women engagement in the process of you know sustainable development in a country like Pakistan. So your ideas. I think we need to have women involved at every level. When we've looked at what works, those countries who have developed the most quickly are countries who have taken advantage of all of their people's talent. And if we are not going to take advantage of 50% of our population, then we will never be as rich and as fulfilled as we could be if we allowed all of our people to participate. And we've got the data showing that what men and women together do is so much stronger than what either can do on their own. So the commitment for women's engagement, the commitment to develop the talent 
within our young people, both boys and girls, will be critical if we want to develop a sustainable world going forward. And we only have one world. And it's going to take all of us, I think, to make sure it's safe and it's the aspiration um, that we have for all of us that we will be fulfilled. So I think women have a powerful uh, role to play and I look forward to the women of everywhere in our Commonwealth having an equal opportunity to participate. Ms. Patricia, thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you on our platform, DW. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Snowbird, for arranging this interview. And we shall talk again on some other occasion. Have a good day. Bye-bye.